Hello there, so in this video I'm going to teach you 10 basic photography tips that every new photographer should know. Now if you're new here, hello, my name is Audrianne from Live Snap Love, where I teach you photography quickly and with more joy and less stress so you can beautifully capture the people and moments that matter most. So without further ado, let's dive right in to our top 10 basic photography tips for new photographers. And number one is keeping the background simple. Now, obviously you can choose whatever background you want, but try to make sure that there's nothing in the background that is distracting from your subject. You don't want something that is pulling the eye away. So try not to have distracting backgrounds, watch out for things growing out of your heads or any objects in the background that may be pulling the eye. Number two is to use natural light whenever possible you are gonna get so much better results if you use natural light only. So that means using the windows in your home or going outside and getting all the beautiful natural light that is there. You do want to avoid unnatural light sources such as household lamps or overhead lighting, at least when you're starting out. You can definitely use those as light sources later. Start now with natural light. I actually recommend that you start indoors. It's easier to control the light there and then branch out to shooting outdoors. And then you can add in artificial light at a later point in your journey. So tip number three is to find your camera manual. Now your camera manual is pretty useless for learning photography, so wouldn't even attempt it. But what it is good for is knowing where everything is on your camera. So many people will give you instructions on how to shoot in aperture priority mode or manual mode or how to change your focus points, but they're unlikely to be able to do that for the particular camera that you have. And that is where your camera manual is worth its weight in gold. So when someone like me tells you to choose your own focus point, you know how you can do that on your own camera. So dig out your camera manual, find out where, how you change your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, how you set your own white balance and how to change your focus point just for starters. Tip number four is to get in close. So one of the things that we see a lot from new photographers is they just kind of point the camera in the general direction of the subject and then leave all this space around them. Now you can absolutely do that, of course, but always ask yourself, is what's in my frame actually adding to the image? If not, consider getting in closer and have your subject take up more of the frame. So tip number five is to learn how to blur out the background. So in portrait photography, this little trick is used a lot. You have your subject in sharp focus and then everything behind them is soft and blurred. And what this does is it helps kind of blur out any distracting elements and it pulls focus directly to our subject. Firstly, because they're the only thing that's sharp in the frame, so our eye is immediately drawn to that. And also, as I said, it blurs out anything that might be distracting. So you're not gonna use this, obviously, in every shot. For example, you wouldn't use this in a landscape photo, but blurring out the background is a great way of bringing attention to your subject. Moving on now to number six, and that is don't always place your subject in the center of the frame. Now, there is times when having your subject in the center works, absolutely, because we get symmetry that way, which is wonderful. But it also leads to a more static image. We want a more dynamic image, and we can do that by moving our subject away from the center of the frame. Now, there are a number of compositional rules or guides that can help you determine where to place your subject in the frame. And the easiest one for starting out with is called the rule of thirds. Simply imagine your frame divided into nine equal sections like you can see in this example here. Place your subject along one of those lines or at the points where they intersect to get a more dynamic and interesting photo. Tip number seven is to take lots of photos. If you have a digital camera, then it doesn't cost you anything to take any photos. You're not gonna have to go and pay for uh, getting your photos printed. So you can get them back into the computer and you can just get rid of the ones that you don't like. So I would experiment with different angles. So what we tend to do a lot, especially when we're standing out, is we stand up and we snap a picture from our viewpoint as we would normally be standing there. I would encourage you to move around your subject. Lie down on the ground on your belly. What do you get from that angle? 
get above your subject and shoot down? What does it look like from there? You'll usually find that as you move your angle around from what would be the normal viewpoint from where everyone is looking at it from and you change that, you're going to get a more interesting photo. Now, tip number eight is a little bit different because it's more of a mindset one than an actual photography tip, and that is to not get disheartened. So I see so many people start out in photography and they're full of enthusiasm. And as they get going, they realize that they have to learn this. And then that leads on to something else that they have to learn and then something else. And before they know it, they start to feel really overwhelmed and they struggle to get the photos that they see in their head. So I do want to let you know that every single photographer who ever lived, ever took photos, had felt probably disheartened way back in the very beginning. Nobody came out of the womb knowing how to use a camera and how to take great photos. And there's lots of different elements to photography, and I think that's what makes it such a wonderful hobby. But you've got all these different pieces of the puzzle, and when you're starting out, you can't see that whole picture yet. You've just got a couple pieces of the puzzle. Don't worry, every single thing you learn is taking you one step closer or adding another piece into that puzzle. So don't get disheartened if your photos don't look the way that you want them to within a couple of weeks of starting out. Keep going with it. I promise the more you learn, the more muscle memory you build in when using your camera, the better your images are going to look. You're gonna get better and better as you go along, I promise. Which leads me rather neatly onto tip number nine, which is to not stay in auto mode. And I will include any of the auto modes here. So we don't want to use auto mode in our camera. We don't want to use the semi-automatic modes like aperture or shutter speed. We do want to learn manual mode. Now, somebody somewhere is going to say, ah, but I know somebody who, famous photographer who shoots in aperture priority mode. You're probably right, there are, but they will know how to shoot in manual mode. When you know how to shoot in manual mode, you really start to understand how your camera is going to react in certain situations. And you can then decide whether to shoot in a semi-automatic mode like aperture priority or to switch to full manual. But the point is you will have that knowledge. So I want you to move away from auto mode on your camera. And absolutely, take that first step in something like aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode, which is going to allow you to choose just one setting and let your camera ban balance the exposure for you. You're going to find that much simpler and then just gradually take control of the camera. But I also want you to move away from the other auto modes as well. I don't want you to have your camera selecting the focus point for you. I don't want you to be using auto white balance, but I do want you to layer this on gradually. So when you start with your camera, you're going to be using everything on auto and that is absolutely fine. It's exactly where you need to be, but then just gradually move away from all of the auto modes until you are taking control of the camera. Because I promise you, it's only when you take control and don't leave it to the camera that you're gonna get the images that you have been dreaming of. And moving on from that is tip number 10, which is to start by learning the exposure triangle. So this is where you're going to learn the building blocks of taking images, which is your three components of exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Now those three things work together in order to control our exposure, which is how light or how dark our images are, but they also control how our images look. So by taking control of all three, we can get our images to look exactly the way that we want them to. But we have to start by learning about what each one does and how they all work together in something called the triangle. So start there, that's gonna be your first lesson, is to learn about the exposure triangle. And I've linked to a lesson underneath this video for you. Now, if you want some help taking better photos quickly, then go and check out the Five Day Beginners Bootcamp. This is a highly actionable workshop and tutorial bundle that will help you get better images in just five days and in just 30 minutes a day. You will find a link to that underneath this video. So if you're a new photographer, be sure to check that out and you'll get lots more information about what we've spoken about in this video there as well. So that's it from me today. If you got value from this video, then please leave a comment below letting me know what tip resonated with you and be sure to hit the subscribe button here and then come over and follow me on Instagram as well. I share lots of good stuff there, lots of tips, lots of tutorials 
tutorials. So make sure that you follow me over there as well. And that's it from me today. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.